Our next step is to upgrade the hardware of our gateway. To do so, we will need to purchase a few new hardware components at the hardware depot. Once we purchase these components and install them, we will then purchase a few programs that will help us complete this tutorial series. Our first step is to open the GPS connection module. It's the third icon from the lower left. You can see that all the servers on this network are displayed on the global map. Each server's location is coordinated by its longitude and latitude. Click the database view and scroll down to the fourth server on the list, Kilo's Hardware Depot. Set up the connection by clicking the link and then click the connect button in the upper right hand corner of the GPS connection module. Once the connection is established, a browser will launch showing us the index page of that server. You can see we've now landed on the index page and all the information has been loaded. Head over to the power supply category. We will need to purchase a new power supply to power the new components we're going to add to our gateway. The power supply that we want to purchase is the basic power core. To do so, click it. It shows you how much it costs, 2500 and before we purchase this, uncheck the auto install feature. This way we can manually install our components. If you don't do that, you may get an error. Now that we've purchased the power unit, go down to the hard disk category. We will be purchasing the basic drive for $1,000. It has a power requirement of 50. Don't forget to uncheck the auto install box and purchase it. Now that we've purchased the components, go ahead and close the browser. We still have a connection established, we're just not viewing it right now. Head down to the fourth icon in the lower left hand corner called the hardware. This will open the hardware configuration module. You can see the motherboard that we have installed with all the various statistics associated with that motherboard. Here is a list of all of the components that are installed. Since all of the components installed on your motherboard have power requirements, we must remove them before trying to replace the power supply. Let's go ahead and unplug our components. You will notice the statistics change in the upper right hand corner. The power used is slowly dropping. Once that number reaches zero, I can then install the power supply component. Now that all components have been removed, I can successfully remove the power supply. Let's take a look at the new power supply. It's a level 2 with an output of 300. The old power supply only had an output of 75. Let's reinstall this component. Now let's reinstall the new hard disk that we just purchased. It's also a level 2, has an output of 100 and a power usage of 50. Reinstall this component. Now that we've installed our two new components, go ahead and install the remaining components. If you wish, you can purchase new components. For example, if we'd like to replace our memory component, let's just click our browser because we are still connected to the Kilo's Hardware Depot. By opening the browser, we land right where we were. Let's take a look at memory. I can purchase a new basic RAM memory component for $1,000. It has a power requirement of 100, but our new power supply should be enough to cover it. I will leave the auto install feature on. You can see that no errors have popped up, therefore I do have enough power to power this unit. Open my hardware module and I will see that the new basic RAM memory unit has been installed. If I try to install the new module, I will get an error because this motherboard only has one slot and that slot is being used. Trying to reinstall the component warns me. Now let's reinstall our modem.
and our process. Although these are the default components that come with your gateway upon a new cr account creation, we will save these for later. Once we upgrade our motherboard, we may be able to install both components. Go ahead and close your hardware configuration module and close your browser. Now we will connect and purchase a few new programs. To do so, click the database view and scroll down to Momo Software Hub. Prime the connection and click the connect button. Now we've established a connection to the software depot. Let's head over to the passwords. We need to purchase a password cracker. So purchase the first one in the list for 300, the simple crack beta. The second program will be a firewall bypasser. Go ahead and click the simple firewall bypass and purchase it for $1,000. Now we will pur purchase a proxy bypasser. Purchase the simple proxy bypasser for $500. Let's go ahead and close the browser. We need to establish a connection to the CodeLink orientation server so that we can bounce into its secure network. By bouncing through that satnet, we will be able to test our programs and not risk being caught by law enforcement. To do so, click the link in the middle of the home page. This will immediately bring the GPS connection module to the front and show us that we're connecting to a new network. Once the network has been loaded, the map is displayed, the locations of the servers are displayed, and we can view all of the servers in this network by clicking the database view. We want to go to the corporate test server. Go ahead and click the connect button. Once the connection is established, the browser will launch and show us the index page on the corporate test server. Here you can see the navigation on the left hand side. The user login area is going to give us access to the secure areas of this server. Currently, we do not have the password cracking program installed. So before we do so, let's go ahead and uninstall the programs that we have. Click the small X in the lower right hand corner and drag them over and drop them on top of the programs. You can now see I have no programs installed into memory. Go ahead and open your file manager in the lower left hand corner and find the simple crack beta icon. Click and drag it into the program memory bar. Once the program is installed into memory, go ahead and close the file management system. Now we're back to our browser page. Click and drag the icon from the program memory bar and drop it onto the security checkpoint. You will now see that the password level has connected to the security checkpoint. Click the launch button. There are various factors that determine how fast the password cracking program runs. You can see a few numbers here on the side that might give you clues as to what math is involved in determining how fast the program will operate. The most important ones I can tell you now are the version levels and the server strength. While you're waiting for the password cracking process to complete, click the ones to give your progress bar a boost. But beware, if you click a zero, your progress bar will be detracted. After we've cracked the password, the program automatically closes and a new page is displayed. We have entered a secure area. You can see the navigation on the left hand side. 